Hey guys, I'm super excited to share this with you. I just finished a speaking gig here in Corona Del Mar, and it's all about the top six tools or tips you can take with you if you're interested in starting a charcuterie business. I'm really excited. I do have to say that someone who asked a question came up to me at the end of um, my talk and told me she found my content on YouTube and um, she's been following me ever since and it helped her, all my YouTube videos helped her start her business. So I'm so grateful for that. Um, however, her business stopped because she felt like she was overwhelmed and burnt out and not making any money. And I am bringing that up because it's super common to um, get burnt out when you're overworking, but especially if you're not making any money, it's like what's driving it. And the thing that sets Board to Business Blueprint apart is the food formula and the discussion of burnout and how to avoid that. So just be mindful if you guys are going to start your business um, and you're watching my videos, you can do it. I absolutely believe in you, but don't forget to budget and create a schedule so that you can avoid burnout. And if you wanna learn more on that, obviously you're always welcome to join my course, Board to Business Blueprint, I'll put it in the link. But without further ado, here is my talk on the six tools you can use to start a charcuterie business. Here for this morning, still morning, <laughs> barely, uh, is Sophia Dodola. Hi, welcome. Uh, she is a devoted mother of two girls. She's not only the founder of a successful catering company, Olive and Nectar, uh, but also the visionary behind the Grace Academy. Uh, balancing the demands of motherhood and business, Sophia empowers individuals worldwide guiding them on the path to financial success by sharing her expertise on how to generate $2,000 every two weeks through her inner innovative and impactful business teachings. So with that, please welcome Sophia Dutufla. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Happy to be here. I'm Sophia. Let me just give you a little photo. I wish I could have brought a charcuterie board to all of you, <laughs> but I have four months old at home, and I'm like, I didn't have time to do that. Okay, so I want to tell you, before I started this business, I was waiting tables for at least 10 years. Started in Los Angeles, moved out here from Sacramento in 2010, and I worked three jobs, and I was hustling and hosting and cocktail waitressing, doing all of the things, and I wanted more stability because my boyfriend at the time, now husband, um, he would always go out and have, do these fun things on the weekends, and I was just like, I have to wait tables and fold napkins till 2 a.m. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. So it motivated me to pivot to do a 9 to 5 job, and I worked at a post-production studio in Hollywood, and this is where I got to get really creative, and I was in charge of basically the director of client services. We would make sure that the editors who came in, they were taken care of. I would make sure they had lunch. I would make them a latte. Like we had a kitchen. It was really cool. So that was like my playground where I first started playing around with cheeses and meats and fruits. And my boss at the time, he was like, I want these people to feel like they're at the Ritz Carlton. Like we want to give them that, that service. And I was like, say no more. So I started making these boards. And Chris Harrison, one of the one of the shows we edited was uh, The Bachelor. Bachelorette, and he was one of the first person to tell me, hey, you should sell these. And so that got into my head, and I was like, huh, maybe I should give this a shot. And so I started All the Nectar in 2018. Now, there was a lot of good things that happened when I started this business. Granted, I'm at my like nine to five job with a laptop, and then a client comes in and I do my job, but then I go back and I'm like, okay, how do I start a business? Like, what entity do I need? Super sneaky, but I, I figured it out. Um, I worked with influencers, really big influencers that helped like make my business grow overnight. Um, when I was at that job, I booked my first corporate client and that client, like that invoice, so much mindset stuff came up for me because that invoice was so big, it was more than the money I had in my checking account at the time. And I like stared at it and I'm like, oh my God, they want it for 250 people and this is the price that I'm saying. Like, I, I, I like sat there with the clicker and I'm like, I don't know if I could hit send on this because I didn't feel like I was good enough or worthy enough of that money. But that was like, I sent it and I got it. And then that was like validation for me. Like, ah, like I, I am deserving of this and this, I have something that people are going to want. And again, I did probably like a handful of cheese boards and I taught myself this as I went. So that was a huge deal for me. And then like I said, that influencer, she helped grow me, this one influence I worked with. 
And then the financial security I got from people calling me, and mostly brides, calling saying, hey, I'm getting married in June, can I book you out? Yes. Hey, I have a corporate event in April, can I book you out? Yes. So when I started booking things out, six months out from where I was at my job, security started to fill me up like, oh my God, I'm okay. Like, I'm okay, I don't have to live paycheck to paycheck. And so that felt really good. And then just a little humble brag, I made a board for Taylor Swift. Woo! It's really enough. You're like, Taylor Swift? Okay, yeah. Yes, we're Swifties. We're Swifties, okay. Yeah, you know, I, I just dropped that on social media that I made a board for her and I was, it's not very cute to me. I don't think it looks great. But I had to sign an NDA. Like, we could not say anything about this. This was six years ago. And so I'm like, I should probably tell people now like that I did that. And now I'm just like, okay, bragging rights, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so those were some of the highlights of getting started into my business, but there's a lot of things that I didn't know what to do, what to say, like so many things I ran into, because literally there's not like a college course you could take, Google's not gonna fill you in, so I just was like doing this secretly at my nine to five and trying to figure it out. So California, LLC, as you're probably familiar, it's super expensive. So there's people that just pay 50 bucks in like Alabama and it's nothing, but here it was really expensive, so I signed up for the wrong entity and then had to pull out of that after filing all this paperwork. Um, I worked with a couple influencers that did absolutely nothing. I thought because they had 700,000 followers that that was going to be good for me. So I went out of pocket, I made a charcuterie board for them, made a grazing table for them, bless you, and um, you know, got 12 followers and didn't get anything from it. So I was like, what did I do wrong there? Um, this is embarrassing. I showed up two hours late to a corporate event because like, I'm not good at math. Like I have my husband do all the math things and this is like you have to work backwards. So it usually takes me about two hours to set up a grazing table. And when the event's at, you know, say 12, you need to get there at 10 to set up, but then you have to prepare for traffic. And so it was really working backwards. And when I slept through my alarm, I was really upset. But thankfully, I, you know, they hired me again, so we're good there. But I just wanted to share that like, you have to be super mindful of the traffic. Um, for getting scissors, you're probably like, what? Like, who cares about scissors? But I created this thing called like a boss bag. Because when I go to these events, I have my non-perishable items and I have my dry storage bag. And then I have my little boss bag. That's Sophia's stuff. That's got my chapstick, right? Hair net, gloves, scissors, paper towels, Purell, time to go pins. I keep that bag with me because you never know. Like scissors, you could be setting up your table, say it's on parchment paper, there's extra paper, and you're like, oh my gosh, like I need to cut that off, that looks really bad, or ah, I just like five grapes just fell off, and look at the vine, like I need to cut the little twine. So there's just, scissors are clutch, and I recommend, don't forget those. Um, oh no, it works, yeah. So I wrote two extra zeros on a uh, contract one, so that made it like a six-figure contract. Still, they hired me. I don't know. I guess I'm just adorable. Like, still, I don't know why, but I still got that event. Um, and that was my biggest event to this date. That was for 500 people. Um, this is the biggest thing that people run into and their biggest fear. They're like, I want to start this business, but like, I feel like I'm going to buy too much food. Yep, that happened to me. And then, which could be a little bit worse, is not buying enough food because then you're like, hey, this is my wedding and um, there's no more food left. So. There is a formula there, and I had to learn that as I went. And then um, I delivered, I started out in Los Angeles, my kitchen was in Sherman Oaks, and so I booked a gig in Long Beach, and I had to commute, and at the time I was selling 24 inch round circular boards, and I rented a car because I had a little Honda Civic, and I'm like, okay, my car's not gonna, I, there's no way. So I rented a car, I got all these boards in the car, I, I get right to Long Beach, and right when I get there, two of the boards, two of the six boards, fell over. So I had to pull over at Whole Foods, get some of the things, wash it there, repackage, and then like bring these boards. And then I call my mom crying, I'm like, I'm not doing boards again. Like, I'm not doing that big. Like, who am I to carry a 24 inch round board, six of them, and I didn't realize, because I was doing boards and grazing tables, and I was like, oh, I should have sold her on a grazing table. It would have been better for her and better for me, and that was the event that not only made me realize I don't want to do boards because, little backstory, they're, they're like um, $200, say a board's $200. The profit on that is not going to be a lot. Where a grazing table is about $2,000, give or take. So then I was like, okay, I need to stick to grazing tables. So, and then I, here's a little caterpillar thing. 
there was a little, I buy organic, so a lot of my things that I produce or I give to people, it's organic, so I'm always washing and making sure that it's clean. There was a teeny tiny little Pixar looking caterpillar in one of my raspberries, and I'm like, I'm so glad I found this before, before the client did. So, that is, hopefully that caterpillar is a butterfly now. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the top six tips that I have, these tools you can utilize if this is something you're interested in doing. What I love about this industry is that there's no like crazy overhead going into it. So you can just tr start with these three steps today and then you love it or you don't. And if you love it, then I would say carry on to these other ones. But it's not like your average business where you know you have to make a profit within one to three years, they say usually is when you start to see money come back. It comes back immediately, like within your first game. So number one thing to do is instead of this ramen diet that we all did in college, it's like the bougie charcuterie diet. And I tell my people to eat charcuterie boards for five days in a row or maybe once a week. And what you're going to do is you're going to repurpose this, these boards and create content from it. So an example of that is this circular board. Let's say you have this board at home and you have a rectangle board and then you have parchment paper. Maybe you have a bookshelf or something. You can set them up, it's the location of where you're setting up the board to get the different content. Always shoot video too, because when I started All the Nectar, Reels did not exist. TikTok kind of was around, it was for like 12 year olds only. And, um, and so I wish I had more video content. But anyway, so you can take the board and switch up the coloring of where things are, switch the shapes out, take a meat away completely, you could crumble this blue cheese. You could do one shot with the brie fully on there, put some honeycomb on top, dress it with lavender, and then remove the honeycomb, cut the cheese, layer it. That way, you're spending 15, 25 bucks on your Trader Joe board, and then you're repurposing it and getting different angles of it so that you put it on Instagram and people are like, oh, she did several different events. Okay, step, step two though. You want to give these things away, these boards that you're making, to neighbors and friends and family and maybe colleagues if you're not being sneaky at your nine to five. Um, you can give these to friends and ask them for feedback. Feedback is always good. They can tell you, hey, you know, I thought these crackers were too salty or they were actually soggy. Did you put this in the refrigerator for too long? Friends will keep it real, especially your sisters. Um, and then your neighbors too. So you can ask them to tag you or take photos and then seeing other people graze on your product is amazing. And step number three, under the influencers, I mean, how many of us in here are sucker for buying product because these influencers make it look so good? Like, I'm sure we all have a bunch of things on Amazon right now in our cart. Um, so influencers are a blessing for us as the business owners because they can make our product look amazing. So whether you're in charcuterie or not, influencers are the way to go. You just have to be so specific on which influencer that you're working with because sometimes they're great and sometimes they're not so great. I like to find one to three to work with um, that are in line with my business. So ways that you can do that is you can look at their following. If it's a bikini babe, mm, probably not gonna be the audience that's gonna wanna buy your cheese board because those are probably just a bunch of men loving her bikini body. But if it's like someone that is a, an influencer that is doing lifestyle and she's doing recipes and she's posting about her kids and there's things that you all have in common, that would be a good influencer for you to work with. Because I'm a mom, I show up on my, my basically my business and I let people know like, hey, I am a mom of two girls, I'm doing this here, and, and, and I share a little bit of me with my audience so that they want to work with me over someone else that might not have kids. They're like, oh, you know what, she gets it. I want her to come to my event. And so that's one thing that can kind of set you apart is letting people know a little bit about you. And maybe it's like, oh, I hate kids, I don't want kids, I don't want to work with a girl with no kids. So that's kind of like really specific, so I don't think people are like that, but anyway, you never know. Okay. Yeah, don't go with the large following. And then the agreement is so important to have a service agreement in place. It doesn't have to be big and like a huge contract, but having something in place with an influencer, you want to basically keep in mind, when are they going to post it? Because you could do an event. I've done an event for an influencer and it didn't get posted for a month and I'm just sitting there every day waiting for my audience to grow. You want to know when. You want to know where your image is going to be posted. Is it going to be a carousel post and you're going to be the third image or are you going to be the first image that appears on her grid? Is it going to be just an Instagram story that lasts only 24 hours? Is she going to add it to a highlight 
or is it going to be on a reel? And then once you get clear on that, you want to set a timeline. Is it going to last for 90 days too? Like that's something I always do, whether a brand's working with me or my influencers, I'm hiring them. Um, 90 days is a standard time. I like to say I'm like on the contract or the service agreement. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if these are kind of exciting to you and you're like, wow, I don't have to spend too much money and I love going to the farmer's market and Trader Joe's, then great, let's move on. <laughs> okay, step four to six, also PS, these are boards I did just recently. I did a workshop for Valentine's Day for a bunch of mom friends. My dad made all of these and they're just gorgeous. They're Cabernet with resin and he, he lasered in my logo. But that was so much fun. Um, workshops are another animal that you can do and it's not even an animal, it's like a cute little puppy and it's so much fun. Um, so step four is finding your niche slash signature item. These things sound very sim similar and they are, but they're, they're different. So a niche is something that would be like, okay, you're vegan, so you want to just serve vegan items. Great, that could be a niche. It could be you just do cert, you just do corporate clients because you just you don't want to do anything on the weekends. You're with your family. Um, this could be bridal clients like me. I like to just do the weekends right now because I just had a baby and I I I'm, I pick and choose my schedule. So some people they want to keep their nine to five and just do weekends. So you get a you can make that kind of a niche like who is your ideal client. A signature item is something that you do that sets you apart from the rest of everybody. So you could have a really cool thing where you do a membership and every month there is a different type of like, oh, this is our Super Bowl board. This is our, our Valentine's Day thing coming up. So that is kind of like a signature item along with, you know, organic for me, that's my signature item. I always love to do like a cheese wheel cake with brie and honeycomb. That's something kind of signature on, for a lot of my brides. Um, and then kids' tables, add-ons could be a signature item. I love doing mocktails, and most of the time, now it's an add-on to do this because it's so much work, but when I make mocktails, I love to make these little ice cubes with microflowers, edible flowers inside, and that elevates like bridal showers and things like that, so it's really fun. Okay, now step five is probably the most intimidating step for a lot of people because then this is when it gets real. Like this is when you're like, okay, I really want to do it. Okay, now you have to like get paperwork going. This is when you want to get all the licensing and the and the and the permits and everything in place. So this is not in any particular order, um, and I'm not um, a lawyer. I wish I was Elwood's, but I can't give legal advice. But anyway, I'll just tell you like the things that I had to do. Um, business license is super important. You're going to need a seller's permit because you're reselling other people's product, which this is clutch too because you can go into things like Restaurant Depot and get things that restaurants have that you can't find at Costco, and that's the best thing. So if you're buying at Costco and Trader Joe's, you know, people know what that product is. So you want to get things that are different, and they're like, oh, this is special. They have, a, they have like a, a wholesaler. Um, health permit, health permit gets you into the commercial kitchen, vice versa. You don't always need a commercial kitchen, but you know, out here there are different parts, like there's someone in Riverside that they were speaking with their health department and they were able to do it under a different type of permit. So you just have to reach out to them and see, you know, talk to your local people. Um, okay, this is a bonus. Because I was in the service industry for so long, I had to get a, um, a serve safe certificate. And this is basically something that, you know, it, you tell people you know how to handle food. And that was like $50, I took it online. But because I wanted to educate myself so much more on like, okay, when do pathogens start to multiply in this weather versus this inside, outside table, and I cut it this way. So the service safe manager certificate really helped me and educate myself. So if a client came in and asked me a question, I would know what to say versus like, I have no idea. And it comes in handy too, when you're making a contract, um, you can basically say different clauses like, this food I don't recommend being out for max two hours, and I like to ask that question ahead of time, indoor or outdoor, and then that will help you you know, decide, okay, this, the, you will learn how long the table should be out. Okay, so contract and service agreement, also those are the things you would need. So once you get over this, it's not that hard, but you take it one permit at a time, <coughs> Then you're ready to launch, and this is when it gets really, really fun and exciting, and you pre-launch with step number one with creating your content. You already have that. That's in your back pocket, right? Then comes the launch, and you're ready. Maybe you're posting those photos already, or maybe you just save them in your, your phone. This is when it's time to collaborate with people. 
And I like to get like a styled photo shoot going. So I reach out on like Facebook, find a local, you know, mom group, entrepreneur group, bride group, whatever. Find new photographers, find a new florist, find a model bride and put together, be the person to initiate the styled photo shoot so that it looks legit. You have photos for your website. And then it's so important to put it here. You can't see it. I guess that's just like a little note for me. Um, when you're going to like, when you book your first gig and you're going in to meet, like you're going to set up, I always keep my eyes open for who the vendors are and I have my cards handy and I'm like, I'll give them a card and I'll say, hey, I'm Sophia with Olive and Nectar. Like, I, I, I followed you on Instagram. That's another thing. When I'm booking the, the table on the phone, I'll say, okay, so who's the florist? Do you have a photographer? Just curious, who's your event planner? And they always give it to me. Um, and then you can follow them ahead of time, just so they're like, oh, okay. And that is such a great way to collaborate. There have been a couple of events that I've referred out to for people who are like, oh, do you have a photographer you can refer? And then it's happened. It just comes back tenfold. So that's a great thing to do is collaborate with vendors, tag them on social media, they'll tag you back. That's a quick way to grow and to keep it local too. Website, it's so important to get your website up. You could just start with social media, no pressure. People like Wix, people like Squarespace. I'm on Wix right now. A lot of the people that I work with also do Squarespace, so you could pick that out. Um, special promo is fun. When you're launching, I recommend doing a sort of like a, 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 a soft launch promo. This could be a buy one, get one half off. This could be some sort of party where you're just inviting people, giving samples out. And then I also wrote here, um, blog is super important. If you have a blog on your website, the SEO with the blog and you writing like your recipes or grazing tables or wedding season, any of that, Google will push you up along with being featured on The Knot or Wedding Wire or some sort of marketing website to put your content. And I can imagine this works in other industries, but you'll push yourself up on Google when they're Googling it. Like if you Google how to start a charcuterie business, I think I'm all over the place. <laughs> Um, because I, I talk about it on YouTube and I'm always I'm out there with it and that's the same with catering Okay, so I was at that full-time job for a little over a year And I went full-time doing all the nectar once I had that security and then knowing like wait I'm making so much more like here's a little math I did I was working about 45 hours a week and I made about five grand a month give or take um, and then with all the nectar, I was working about 10 to 15 hours a week and making 5k a month. So it was like, I'm making the same amount, but working significantly less. So I was like, hmm, that's a good sign. Um, and not only, it wasn't, that was not my, like, the main thing to make me. It was all these things that I learned. I was like, okay, I feel confident now. I didn't overspend. I didn't go to, I went to Italy once. Do we know what Italy is? Okay, Century City. Went there, it was an, they told me, hey, I want an Italian themed grazing table. I'm like, I got you. I'm a woman, I love to spend. I wasn't keeping track of my budget. I went to Italy and like, I didn't make money, too much money on that because I was so excited about the limoncello and the, the brisala and I just got all of it. So I had too much fun. So after I was like, okay, you wanna make money doing this, like learn to budget. So I created a for, food formula, I created a budget, then I was like, oh, cool, I'm seeing a profit, and I gave a third to myself, a third back to all of the nectar, and then I felt good about that. Um, I didn't waste money on influencers. I started getting quotes to be featured on Instagram stories from $1,200 to $8,000, and I have to pay for a board, and I'm like, no, thank you. So I didn't do that. Um, the quantity of food to buy is super important, so you know like how many ounces per person. That's what's important in that. And then how to find clients. And then once I was getting confident in that, and every time I booked an event, it's like, I just need one person. If all of you had saw a grazing table, it would just take one person for you to hire me to do a grazing table. And then at your event, then it just takes one more person. And then it's this domino effect. And that's kind of how it rolls out. And so when you're doing your marketing, in addition to the, the domino effect of just eyeballs on it, it's, it's such a great, consistent business. So I officially launched in 2018. And then I launched my way out in the nine to five. Okay, so now you're probably like, wait, why do you have the Grace Academy? How did that get started? So it was actually in 2020 I started the Grace Academy pre COVID, like right in the COVID time. And people were DMing me saying, like, on all of the Nectar's account, like, how did you get started? What are you setting up on? Where did you get that? Where did you find this? And all these questions. And at first, I was like super like possessive and like insecure, and I blocked these people, super petty. But I was like, uh uh, I'm not sharing my details with you. 
And then I was talking to a girlfriend, she's like, no, like, why don't you give your secrets to people? Just charge them, do a little coaching. I'm like, okay, I'll try that out. So there was eight people that um, were like, yeah, down, yeah, coach me. And so I coached them, and I noticed every week I was saying the same exact thing. They all had the same questions. And then that's basically when I created a course because I was like, okay, I don't, I don't want to, you know, just be coaching the same thing. And then there was so much more value going into it because they would ask questions, but then I had so much more to share. And I thought, okay, let me, I have the YouTube channel that I started where I was just doing tutorials for fun during All the Nectar. And then I started putting business advice out there for people. And that's one of the reasons why I started the Grace Academy. And basically TGA, Grace Academy, is an umbrella for all the courses and the free contents and the things I have underneath it. Oh, okay, so Board to Business Blueprint is the course that I started that teaches you step by step on how you can launch a successful business. And this little guy is basically all of California, so like, don't get like, I mean, let me just say, this is a big number. However, we have a ton of weddings in Southern California every year. And when I realized there are enough events to go around, I stopped feeling so possessive of my business. I'm like, girl, you can't even do any, like all of it if you wanted to. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, coach people. There's plenty of people in Orange County that have taken my course. And it's really, like, really cool that I have people in Canada, Australia. Um, I have someone in Dubai. It's universal. Um, so that's the best thing about this. But the average wedding, I've done several weddings for their cocktail hour, and the average wedding is about this number. This is true. Um, but I've noticed the brides usually pay, they're like, let's do it for about 120 the grazing table, because they have an in and out or some sort of past appetizers. Um, so I wanted to show you guys like a, a basic a example of what it could look like. If you had, a, your per person rate is $20 per person, which we are all blessed for in Southern California, that is not going to be our rate. Uh, because you know, that's not a lot. So I wanted to like not give you a pipe dream. I wanted to show you the low number so you'd be like, oh, this is legit. So if it was 110 people for 20 people, that's 2,200 with four other line items. That's just the first line item on the invoice. And then the common line items that fall under that are your setup and breakdown fee. The brides love props. I call this a styled and layered grazing table when I'm including marble risers and the cheese knives and the crates and the big baskets and the beautiful things coming out. Like that is a style table. So that includes a breakdown fee. I have to come back for my props. I love them. Okay, so then you have that fee. Then you have travel and gas. So if they're if I'm I'm in Seal Beach, so when anyone's in like Deep Laguna, that's going to be like a travel fee for me or, or Deep LA travel. If they're staying local, Cypress, you know, Costa Mesa, it'll just be like the gas. Um, add-ons are big. So I have a several different add-ons, mocktails, flowers. It could be something like they want to keep, they just want to add cheese knives and they want a flat lay with no props. That's an add-on. And all of these things add to your profits. So that's a nice juicy profit because you just use a little bit of that to, to put towards the budget for the food. And then the rest is yours. And then you have all of these, which are yours as well. Another add-on that got cut off is a replenisher. So say the grazing table's here, I offer the brides like, hey, would you like me to stay and be a replenisher? Um, I'm happy to build a bite for all of the people, educate them. The vegan things are over here, the vegan cheese. Oh, she's gluten-free, I know where that's at. And you can upsell them that and then charge another line item, $35 an hour for however long you want this person to be here. So that's how that breaks down. And then I just wanted to read some client testimonials I have. Um, I have someone that said, I'm going to share some good news. I have officially went into business about three weeks ago. Word is already getting out. I have three tables booked for December. I am getting calls almost daily. This is so amazing and I'm so grateful that I ran across Sophia and Jola. Thank you so much. Um, hot tip, Grasshopper is uh, it's a type of app you can use so that people aren't calling you on your cell phone directly and you don't have to give out your personal cell phone. So when she's getting calls daily, I hope it wasn't her actual phone. Um, okay, so because of the Grace Academy, I have secured 12K in catering sales this month, my first official month with kitchen, license, etc. And my workshop is sold out. Seriously, Sophia, I'm so grateful. Hope one day to meet you in person so I can give you a hug. Thank you all for your thank you for all of your guidance. You have changed my life. Um, see so these I get these, you can see them on my Instagram, they make me emotional because it's so sweet. I'm like, oh my god, like I changed a life. It's just wild to me, but so beautiful too. And the workshops, I do have a workshop course. It's just a little quick audio course that breaks down everything you need to just like go out there and get the clients and book the workshops. 
Um, okay, so your BBB course was a game changer. It gave me the formulas I needed to make sense of everything and made calculations so much easier. As a result, I'm also a lot more confident in my work and quality of service I provide. I highly recommend anyone on the fence about starting and anyone, anyone already in the game, lots of nuggets in there for sure. So if anyone was interested in this, I have a special offer for these, the Shein Intentional Convention today. Um, you can have access to the course and then save a lot of money there. I also have an annual thing I'm doing. It does, this is a limited time. I don't, honestly, I was like, five people max is all I can take for this because I have two little girls at home. I'm like, I don't want to create burnout. So if you are interested in the one-on-one -on -one three month program, I do have that. Um, we can talk about that. But let's just review our takeaways and then we can do a quick Q&A. Um, you're going to get content for free, eat charcuterie, be on that bougie diet, give the free boards away to some friends and family, find an influencer that you want to work with, but don't be blinded by their following. Maybe work with someone that has 3,000 followers and see how that works for you. Find a niche. What are you into? Do you want to do, you know, just uh, vegan boards or do you want to do gummy boards? That's a fun niche too. Get official, launch, and then, you know, follow me on the Grace Academy. <laughs> Any questions? <coughs> no questions. Okay, yeah? I'm yeah. curious, I've been converted in Southern California and this market feels very saturated. <coughs> yeah. But I'm curious kind of how you, kind of what your take is on I'm assuming your coaching is nationwide, kind of, but what does it look like in other parts of the country? In terms of, is this popular? It's super popular here, like I know, we all love a good check through work. But I'm curious what you have seen from your clients in other parts of the country. Yeah, so saturated is great, it's like Starbucks. The more Starbucks there are, the more people are like, I want that, I want that, right? But then not saturated is also great because you're the first person to do it. You're the different one. You're the one in that small town in you know, Dubai that's the first person doing it, and everyone's like, what is this? I want this. So it's a big blessing because when I first started all of Inactive, there were people that did not like my price. I started out at $22 per person in 2018, and they were like, that is way too expensive. Um, I don't... You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I can put cheese and meat on a table myself. And then if I just, I stuck out to that price, I'm like, I think that's what I, that's what I deserve. And then, um, and then people did pay it. So you just find the clients that will pay that for you. Um, but I noticed as this got more popular, people were paying that number easy because they're like, oh, I see this everywhere. And I do recommend when you do start to position yourself lower than your competitors so that you are getting more gigs that way. And then you can always raise that. Price up. But yeah, people who are in small towns, they usually have a city not too far away and they make it happen. Gotta hustle. Yeah. Who helped you stand more? Influencers or the neighbors and friends that you were giving your free product away to? Influencers. So the reason why I say neighbors and friends and then influencers is because you're not leaving a business, so I don't want you to like get in trouble and serve a bunch of influencers and their people that they're bringing their brands, and then you know someone gets sick or something. God forbid that would happen. But it's the friends and family for free, is so that you can build the business without the expense of a commercial kitchen. And people are like, oh, I don't want to pay for a kitchen. You don't have to. The way you do your invoice, you bake those prices in. Everything is going to be like taken care of because you don't really have to go out of pocket except for that initial cost with building the boards. Yeah. Yes? Can you talk to us a little bit about just burnout? How do you replenish yourself? And especially for those, it seems like now, you know, what year are we in? 2024, everyone has a side hustle. Everyone is an entrepreneur. And we have to be because of our economy, but I also, like, it always worries me, like, for the wellness of women. Like, the, the she bosses that uh, go and grind. Like, how do you take care of yourself? How do you keep inspired? How do you avoid burnout? I say no. I say no to events just because I like want to have that extra money, which would be nice. I say no, and I talk about burnout because I did get burnt out. I like I hired someone to help me prep for something, and she bailed. And what was supposed to be just five hours of prepping for a wedding was twelve hours on my end. And that, like, and I was working weekend and weekend, nine to five, and I was just like, oh my God, I'm feeling so exhausted. And it was the time when I started the Grace Academy, so I pulled out of catering to replenish myself and was coaching people, and I fell in love with coaching, 
And then I was like, wow, like that really, that's what burnout is. I needed a break. And I, and that hustle, that culture that we're in, um, it, it, forced, it forced myself to slow down and then I got back into it and then I had a baby and I'm like, I can't. Like I had some postpartum stuff going on with my firstborn two years ago and then I just had this new baby and like as much as I want to be with them, this creative outlet fuels me. So if I, I have to keep the balance because if I'm just a mom, I'm like, but I'm this creative person. I need like more than Coco Melon. And then <laughs> when I'm doing charcuterie, it like it helps balance me. So during nap time, I do a little bit of my hustle. Sometimes I take a nap, but other times I just the key is to slow down and you know meditate if you can. That that's helped me a lot. Good question. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering when you're looking for like influencers, are you looking at like local OC or is it more like nationwide? Wherever you want to serve. So if you just want to serve OC, then I would focus on that. But I do San Diego, like the LA influencer, she had things in San Diego and I was like, I'll do it, I'll do it for you. Um, so just wherever you want to start is where I would say. But it doesn't hurt because if they're in LA, there's probably some more, you guys probably follow some people that are in LA and you live in Orange County, so keep it local. Okay. Don't look, I'm not even rushing. Okay, any final questions? Okay, and then one last thing, I was talking with her prior to this. Um, I got this because I, this was the beginning of the year. I was like, what do I wanna do? I wanna do something more with my business. And I I was like, okay, I'm making a vision board. I was like, I want a speaking gig. I wanna make myself like the authority. Like I, I am a figure in this, this place. I have so much to teach. And so I Googled, this popped up, and I was like, I wanna speak at this event. I reached out, I was intentional, and here I am today. So, <laughs> it is on my dream board. Thanks for coming, everybody. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. We're going to take a quick photo. Oh, okay. Can I sit here? You can sit here. We'll, we'll, we'll let him talk. Okay. Yeah, that way I get to sure. I'd like to thank my mom. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.